dear dairy, if you're going to take a shower and wash your hair, do not take a nap immediately thereafter without drying your hair first. Otherwise, you wind up looking like this. It doesn't help that I sleep predominantly on my left side because that's why my hair on this side is almost always screwed up. That's why I usually take my showers in the morning because it fixes my hair and I don't look like I've had, you know, a, a black cat go off in this ear, you know, blow my hair out. <clears throat> so I'll have to take another shower in the morning before I go to work. <sighs> um, so what happened today? Well, this morning I woke up and I went to Marie Callender's and had my usual breakfast buffet because they have a great breakfast buffet. It has um, Egg Benedict, which I very much enjoy. And they have uh, sausage, you know, little sausage links. I get those. And then I get this uh, slice of spinach quiche, which is very, very good. And that's what I get from the, the buffet line. And then I also get a big salad and a bowl of cottage cheese. And that's, you know, my Sunday morning breakfast, unless I'm out of town or something. Um, anyway, that's, I, I mentioned last night that I'm, I'm a creature of habit and I tend to get into patterns and I, I fall into patterns and I stay there. And that's, that's always my, my Sunday morning thing. That's what I do. Sunday mornings, I go to Marie Calendar's and I have my, my breakfast buffet. Um, so I came home after that and, um, recorded the, <clears throat> I'm just about to go back to bed. So yawning is starting to kick in. Um, so I came home and I recorded the, the small snippet that I'm supposed to do for the, the guys in England, uh, of the story that they want me to narrate. So hopefully they'll listen to that today and see if they, if they like the, the cadence that I used on the, um, on the narration. And if they did, then I'll go ahead and record the rest of it. I think given how horrible the acoustics are here, I'm going to go ahead and ask one of my friends uh, who has a, um, a recording booth if I can uh, borrow his room or whatever. Um, I have to talk to him sometime this week because there's some other stuff I, I want to do anyway. Um, and it would be easier to do if I have an actual recording booth I'll have to find out how much he wants uh, money-wise to use his facilities. And I, I should pay him. I mean, yeah, we're friends, but this that's business stuff. Anyway. Um, let's see, what else? More Law and Order, obviously, because I'm, I'm, I'm at the last season of both. I kind of been trying to time it so that I'm, I'm, you know, equal distant, equidistant, whatever, through both, uh, series. So I hope to finish them about the same time. And I think if I watch an episode of each, uh, every night for, you know, this thing, presuming I don't, I've also had the urge to write. Now, I, I'm, I'm a decent writer. I'm not a great writer like some of my friends are. They're just amazing. Um, I don't have the, uh, uh, the stick to itiveness. Let's call it the self discipline to <laughs> consistently write, which sounds like a bit of a cheat given the fact that I just a few moments ago said that I'm a creature of habit and when I get into a pattern, I like to stay there. And that's true. I just don't really get into the habit of writing consistently and establishing that pattern has proven to be challenging. But also writing isn't something that I wanted to do for a living. And I guess that's part of what I felt was a little bit daunting being in the writer's group that I was in is that virtually every one of them was, you know, writing for the purposes of you know, for doing it for one, because they enjoy it, but two, they want to get published. You know, they, they want to be published authors. Uh, I don't really know if I care about it that much. I mean, I like writing. I enjoy it a great deal. Um, lately I've been, it's really weird because I've got these, these stories that are kind of inspired by Skyrim because I really love the Khajiit. Big surprise there. Um, but I also like the Argonians. I'm probably going to wind up playing one of the two in, in Elder Scrolls Online. So, Stories involving the two of them, but I also am a huge fan of Star Trek. 
and, you know, kind of high techy stuff. And I think that's probably what part of what draws me to Eve. And there was a point, and I am really getting off the thread, but I didn't have a lot to talk about today, so this is fine. Um, when I first joined Eve and I was trying to find some corporations to join, one of the last corporations I actually talked to asked me, what is it that I want to do? Why did I join this game? What do I want to get out of it? And I said that more than anything, what I want to do is I want to explore the unexplored. I want to, to see the unseen. I want to go in and touch planets that no one else has touched. You know, I want to, you know, archaeology and, and, and find old relics and things and, 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 and research stuff. That's what I want to do. And this guy immediately said, there is no star system in this entire game that has not been touched. There is nothing that has not been explored. There is nothing that has not been touched or seen. And I'm like, damn it, damn it to hell. And at that point, I kind of stopped playing for almost a year because uh, I was like, well, then this game holds nothing for me until they fix that. But then a lot of what, it, it's it's kind of like, um, well, honestly, it's the same thing with games like Skyrim and, and, and Star Trek and whatnot. The whenever we would do D and D adventures, you know, it, it's always kind of this, this lull until you get to the next encounter or the next big happening or whatever it is. And a lot of people hate that. They don't like the idea of this, this, you know, extended period of downtime. And I think that's part of what gets lost in a lot of D and D games, not just D and D games, but you know, Star Trek and everything else. You know, if you watch like the next generation or, 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 uh, the original series or whatever, there are huge gaps of time between the missions that we've seen. And it's huge gaps of time where people are just going about their daily business. They've got this daily routine that they go through. They've got different things that they're, you know, doing research on and whatnot. They've, you know, picked up some new, new crystalline structure from the last planet they were at. And they're just in the lab, you know, doing scientific experimentation. And that kind of thing sort of fascinates me with, um, with D and D or, or Skyrim or whatever, one of the guys that I love watching on YouTube, uh, Gopher, he does a very immersive, um, type of gaming where he, he very rarely uses the carriage to get from anywhere. He never fast travels and he usually runs or rides his horse from one place to another. And to me, that, that, that has an appeal you know, because for him, it's because he would miss out on everything that happens from point A to point B. You know, there are random encounters that could wind up happening or whatever. Um, you know, for me, those were the parts of D&D that I always found kind of interesting. This is perfect moments for character development. When you're sitting around the campfire, just talking to each other, or you're by yourself. And you're sitting there and you're just staring into the fire, occasionally poking at it with a stick to kind of stoke it a little bit or something. You know, or, or moments that you stop because you have to feed and water your horse, or you have to go fishing, you have to go hunting, or whatever. That kind of thing. It's like those are, are really these, these, these breadcrumbs that lead to, I don't know, I just find them really interesting. That's why most people think that my style of gaming is very boring because I like the, the little minutia stuff a lot more than I like the, the big thing. I would probably make a great farmer just day after day after day of doing the same thing. Just whatever. <sighs> anyway, so <laughs> where was I? Law and Order, watch a couple of episodes of that, and um, should have it timed out to uh, to work out right. Um, let's see, not really much else. Uh, went and had dinner, made arrangements with my housemate to borrow their cars until my my friends are my other friends are available to look at my car and find out what the heck is wrong, if anything, or if I'm just freaking out because whatever, I don't know. I just, I need to, I need to strike it rich and get a new car. I think that's what I need to do. That's what I've been doing wrong. I need, I haven't been planning for that. I've just been planning, you know, droning through day by day, nose to the grinds from keep doing what I have to do within the moment. I haven't been planning to make it rich. That's my mistake, I think. Maybe that's what I need to do. I need to plan to be incredibly rich and then do that Rockefeller syndrome thing where I have, you know, millions upon millions of dollars, but I still just wear, you know, 
torn up t-shirts and, and you know, ratty, you know, sweatpants, well, not ratty sweatpants. Rats are not good in your pants generally because they're, they're bitey. Uh, I've had many friends who have raised rats and they, they, they nip and I don't want, not in my pants, no. So let's say, um, you know, a t-shirt and maybe, you know, grungy jeans or, you know, those, those, those shorts that you've owned for, for years and have started to fray around the waistband and everything to the point that they're finally really comfortable. Yes, they've been broken in very, very well. Yes. So I will make tremendous amounts of money and then wear really just blah clothes because they're comfortable. Because that's what I like. I like being comfortable. I'm drifting again. Drifting into the realm of richness. That's, that's what I'll do. Right. Okay, so we're about 11 minutes into this thing, and I spent most of the time talking about space exploration, or the, the slow, steady cruise between planets of space exploration. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let's see uh, what tomorrow brings, shall we? All right, you guys, go out there and, and you know, do what you got to do to keep yourselves happy and sane, and uh, be careless.